Hey, what's up everybody? Grant here. Welcome back to the channel. And we're going to be doing my unboxing of the HTC One A9. That's right, the HTC One A9. Now, this is a phone that came out, I think, at the end of 2015. So, uh, a pretty old phone by smartphone standards. Um, it came out and I think it was priced around $499. And a lot of people lost their minds because HTC is known for their all-metal builds. You know, like this right here, like the HTC 10. When you think HTC, you think build quality like this. And when the A9 came out, it looked a lot like an iPhone. And a lot of HTC fans and Android fans kind of lost their minds. HTC is copying Apple a lot. And I don't know. It just got a lot of negative press on it. I thought it looked great. I picked one up at $499. But after playing with it, it just was not worth $500. Bucks. And so right now, HTC, is, I think, is still trying to sell this thing for $429. But I saw this for a pretty sweet deal at $150. Um, on HS HSN Home Shopping Network.com, HSN.com. Uh, Newegg also had a similar deal. They're selling the phone for 150 but HSN had this with this package here where you get a cheap little TPU case here, and it's a very cheap case, but it's a little, little bit of freebies. Uh, they give you this old car adapter thing, so if you really want the car charger, there you go. Uh, you get an app bundle. You can go and redeem that. I'm not really sure what apps you get. I didn't check it out yet, but you get a small little app bundle. But more importantly, it comes with a month of free Boost Mobile service. So you can go and redeem a month of free Boost Mobile service included with that $150 price. So long as you do it within 60 days of your purchase date. So that's pretty cool there. But at $150, I thought I'd pick this up again to give it a spin here in early 2017 while we wait for all the flagships to be announced and released after MWC at the end of this month. Uh, but I thought 150 bucks for this thing was a pretty sweet deal. Check out the specs real quick, but you'll notice it's definitely an HTC type of box. Nothing new there, but check out the specs on the back. We've got, so this is a 5-inch device, so it's a 5-inch 1080p LCD display. It's got a Snapdragon 617, so same processor that you're going to find in your Z Max Pro, uh, your Axon 7 Mini. It comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage that you see there. It does have micro SD card support up to, up to 2 terabytes. It does have a 13 megapixel rear camera at f over 2.0 aperture, but it does have OIS. So having OIS on a phone, you know, in this price range is pretty good. And like we said, it's got that uh, it's got a front-facing ultra pixel camera. It does support, like in true HTC style, it supports high-res audio and Dolby audio. So you should get really good audio quality if you plug your headphones into this thing. And it definitely has a headphone jack, as in 2015, right? So all your basic specs are there. Um, not your high-end phone, really a mid-range phone, and at 500 bucks, this thing was definitely not worth it. You, even at 430 right now, which is what HTC is asking for, it just trying to compete with things like the Axon 7, the regular Axon 7, your OnePlus 3T, and no way does it do that. But at 150 this seems like it'd be one hell of a budget smartphone. The only downside that I can really see to this thing, oh, well, and we dumped the whole box contents, but the only thing downside I can see to this thing is going to be its battery. I think the battery is, let me check here. Just over 2,000 milliamps, so it's like 2150 milliamp hours. So a really small battery in this thing, and I'm not expecting great battery life. I mean, my HTC 10 barely gets me like three to four hours, so this is probably gonna get me barely two hours. So if battery, if you're looking for a battery king, this is not gonna be it. But let's go here and take it out of the shell. So there you go. And I hate it when they do this. They have this little sticker on the bottom. Let me quick, take a that off real quick but there you go so that is the HEC 1A9 so to me this is a very beautiful design I like aluminum unibody designs and this thing feels really solid so it's definitely an all metal build it's got kind of like a almost a waxy back but it's still aluminum so it still feels nice and cool to the touch you've got those antenna bands that not everybody really likes but I got it in this carbon gray color, which I think looks really awesome. Uh, there's your camera sensor up there, dead center in the middle. So on your iPhone, you're going to have it on the side. Your flash, power and volume, textured power, power button, your fingerprint sensor. It's not a physical home button. It's just a sensor to rest your finger on. Uh, one bottom firing speaker there. Uh, you got micro SD card. There's your headphone jack. And you've got your SIM card and your micro SD card slots that are separate here. So real quick, I mean, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Here's an iPhone 7 next to the HTC One A9. So similar design, you got an oval bottom at the bottom, but that rounded corner look. And there's the back. So 
Even the sensor looks a little bit like an iPhone, even though the position is in the middle versus on the left. But hey, very similar. I can see where people are have concerns, but that's not a really big deal to me. I think it looks really nice. And at 150, this build quality here, this is your typical HTC build quality. Even that ridge power button is pretty awesome. So this thing is feels very sturdy. I'm not going to do any kind of a bend test. I'm not gonna be crazy, but it definitely feels like an HTC build. It's a very solid build. For 150 bucks, this is very solid. I don't think you're going to go wrong. Real quick, like we saw when I dumped everything else out, you get a power brick. I believe this supports fast charging. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But there's your power brick. HTC logo branding on it. And you've got your micro, S micro USB cable. So nothing special there. Anything else you get in the box, you just get a SIM ejector tool. Shows you how to use it. You get your books. Since this is Boost Mobile, you've got the Sprint version of your paperwork there. So nothing too exciting in the packaging. But back to the phone. Let's power it up. Give it a good boot up here. And like I said, when I picked it up, I really liked the look of the phone. I got it, and I thought it was really nice, really solid. But at $499, but those specs, even in 20, end of 2015, it definitely wasn't worth it, especially with that small battery. Probably going to get not so good battery life out of this thing. But at 150 I think this thing is a steal for the build quality that you see here. And, you know, you're again, you're competing with things like the Axon 7 Mini, which is 199 right now. So this is 150 Got the same processors, bought the, I think the same memory, 3 gigs and 32 gigs onboard storage. So, um, and the Axon 7 Mini is also built like a tank, very solid metal build. It's going to have better built-in speakers, but this is probably going to have some better um, internal audio for your headphones. So I think it competes very well there. Uh, you're competing with things like the ZMAX Pro, which is at the very lower end of that spectrum, but similar specs, just a much bigger phone, obviously. But this is a 5-inch display, pretty big top and bottom bezels there. Uh, bringing the HTC 10, for example, which is a 5.2-inch display. So it's almost just as big, very similar in overall size, but of course all metal body here, still an all metal body here, but just much more in an, you know, your iPhone style look, but I still think it looks great. It still feels very nice in the hand. For a five inch phone, it feels pretty big. It doesn't, you, I would have thought of it a lot smaller at five inches because even the Axon 7 Mini is 5.2 and I think that feels Maybe about the same size, but because it's five inches, it won't be as wide, so easy to grip here. It's not too small at all. So five inches is small by today's standards, but I think it's a it feels like a very good size in your hand. Some people might not like the top and bottom bezel, but because this is all black front, it kind of blends in with the screen very pretty nicely. So this could take a little while because it's optimizing my app, the onboard apps, which it says there's 24 of them. So while it's doing that. We'll probably cut the video here and we'll come back with some quick, maybe some walk through it, maybe a bit of a setup, show you, sense you why. All right, so it's finally finished this boot up. This is your typical HTC first boot Talk welcome screen. Audio feedback and there you can hear the accessibility settings going off, so we'll just go through it, start, and we'll try to speed through this setup. Front scanner here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen taps. This set up a fingerprint. Not too bad. Not the fastest setup, but definitely not the worst. And let's see what I want to do. Name the phone, finish it up. Congratulations, thanks very much. Finishing setup. And we're in. So this is your stock HTC Sense home screen here. So we can personalize things around. Pinch to zoom, pinch in, you can set up all your widgets and stuff. We'll just go back. There's a launcher. So pretty snappy here. Just moving around. So the 617 is not really a bad processor. It's just not going to be you know, for everyone, especially if you're doing a lot of heavy lifting, but for everyday use, you know, if you're just going through basic apps, social media, email, and all that, like you can see here, I'm just looking through things. Seems pretty good. 
open up a couple things. I don't really have any internet connection on, so I won't do much, but open up a few things. We can see here, there's your card stack and your app switcher, recent apps. So just moving through a few things. Pretty snappy. I don't see any initial lag or jitteriness, you know, so that's good. We'll see as we start using it. I don't expect it to be. From what I remember when I briefly used this, it was a pretty smooth phone for, for the specs for a 617 processor. It's got 3 gigs of RAM. That combination usually performs well enough. I mean, if you're going to do heavy gaming and stuff, or you're a big heavy user, that may not be for you, but for, like I said, for everyday basic things and just moving around the UI, that's more than enough to have a really smooth experience here on Android, especially with the HTC Sense UI they got here. If we go into settings, here's what settings look like in Sense UI. What about, we've got... About software information, Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, and what else we got? Security patch level, May of 2016, so we'll see if we get any updates on this thing. Oh, there you go, your typical settings, our connection settings, personalization, wallpaper, themes. I guess HTC has some themes. So you got a bunch of theme options. So there's its theme engine there. What else you got? A fingerprint scanner. So you set up one. So let's see how it is. Uh, got to enter my pin the first time or else it's not going to work. So let's try that again. There you go. So pretty fast scanner. It's not going to be your fastest, but as you can see, it works, right? So for 150 bucks, I'm not complaining. No problems with the scanner there. Here's our boom sound. So once you have think headset plugged in and whatnot, you can play around your boom audio, boom sound audio settings. Now it's not going to have the greatest speaker audio quality because you just got that speaker there. But internal audio quality should be really good if you plug in some headphones. We'll play with that. But there you go. Yeah. So pull it on menu. Looks pretty stock right there. Nothing fancy, nothing changed, pretty stock. All right, so there we go. Quick uh, run around the UI here. Everything's fairly snappy as you expect because we don't have a ton of apps in it. We barely started using it, but first impressions, just moving around, clicking around, scrolling around. Very fast, very fluid. No problems there so far, but once we get everything loaded up, we'll come back and let you know how it's performing. Uh, we can get the camera here real quick. So jump to the camera app. We'll Get our HTC 10 out there. We'll tap to focus and we'll just take a quick shot. So real quick shutter speed. So I took the picture really quickly. And it looks really nice actually. So I don't think it looks as good in the viewfinder here. But in person it looks real nice. Of course we've got some pretty good lighting here. You can see the ridges on that power button. So pretty good there. It's got OIS. I expect it to be a pretty decent performer there. Um, HTC is not near the best in camera but you know again 150 bucks it's got ois in it it should be fairly decent but we'll test it out we'll let you know i'm really looking forward to trying out um and seeing how battery life holds up on this thing because again barely over 2000 milliamp hour battery I'm not expecting miracles here with the battery um but that's the one thing that's probably gonna be the one downside that i can see so far because the build quality like i said is very nice the camera seems pretty decent uh performance seems to be on par with other mid-range phones that 617 processor in it so can't be disappointed there the only th it's got double tap to wake which i like so i think battery just might be the only thing that holds us back but at 150 bucks i'm not gonna be too disappointed about that so long as it gets me through most of my day but yeah this has been the quick unboxing and run through of the hcc 189 we'll come back let you know how it's performing drop any anything you want to find out or any other questions or comments drop them down below and as always thanks for watching